Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back. If you're new, my name's Amy, this is Dino Budgets, and today we are going to talk budget binders, budget categories, starting off your budget, and the top 10 categories I think are the basics to start your budget with. So before we get into it, we gotta see what T-Rex is trying. Remember that no matter what type of day you're having, at least you're not a T-Rex trying to start a curling team. <laughs> oh, I can just imagine them on the ice. Like, wouldn't that just be so hilarious to watch? I mean, <laughs> it's crazy. So today I'm going to be showing off to you some brand new inserts for my binders that I have designed. These are all going to hopefully very soon be available in either an Etsy store or a website for purchasing. And I have gone through and meticulously designed and selected a font for each style. So I'm very excited to show these off to you, but this is kind of more geared towards beginners. And so if you're like just starting out your budget, and you're seeing, oh my goodness, she has this many categories. I don't want you to freak out, okay? This is here and all of these will be for inspiration. And then at the end, I will recap the top 10 out of these that I think are perfect to start your budget with. Because as I've said in other videos, any budgeting is better than no budgeting. So you can start with those 10 and then either keep those 10 if you find out that that is the perfect amount for you, or you can work up, look at other categories, be like, oh, that would work for me too, and slowly start to add them. Okay, don't jump into a massive amount of you know categories all at once because you will just overwhelm yourself, burn yourself out, and you won't continue your budgeting. So we want to work on something that is for long term, all right? So first things first, I'm going to grab my binder that I keep my digital accounts in and we're going to grab the inserts for those. So I like to call this design hip to be square and I just, I love the font on this one. So different, so fun. All right, so I call this one my digital binder because these are all categories that I actually keep in the bank. These are categories that are either, you know, money in, money out every month or get paid on a credit card or automatically withdrawn from my checking account. So it's just something I don't want to be taking out of the bank and putting back in constantly every week. So I have this one labeled utilities. We're going to get rid of that. And this is what I'm going to call monthly bills. So every month I go through, see what bills I have and set that amount money aside in the checking account because almost all of them are auto withdrawal for me. Food. Now I use the food category for groceries, eating out, picking up snacks, you know, so I keep it very basic and I keep it all in one category. Gas, obviously this is for our vehicles. Medical, this is for any medical bills. Our medical insurance does come out of my husband's paycheck but we also have an HSA, but I do try to pay from this category first um, for like smaller bills that come just so I don't have to um, dip into that and it can keep growing. Then I have a home maintenance. Insurance, this one's being renamed. It's actually yearly bills. So these are any bills that I pay yearly or maybe even like semi-annually, so twice a year, but just longer term ones I need to save up for emergency this is an emergency fund you know things happen and just to have some money set aside is always you know a it may not cover it all but at least you had something so you don't feel like you have to wipe out your entire budget if something happens in an emergency so excellent category to have savings this one for me is just a general savings I do have more specific savings goals and we will get to those and then buffer. This is extra that I like to keep in my checking account in case there is a bill I forgot or, you know, when I'm rounding up and rounding down, I have a few cents that I don't transfer from one of these accounts 
it is covered in the buffer. All right. So after that, I am going to pull out the You and Me binder. I'm bringing it back, you guys. I have been thinking about these categories for so long, and I have deemed that I am breaking them out into multiple binders again and saving for very specific things. And so, appropriately named The Herd, <laughs> with all of the dinos on here, this is going to be the inserts I used for the You and Me binder. So, I have some in here that I need to replace, and I need some extra inserts here because I am adding some envelopes back in. I, you know, kind of gave myself a reset and just had very basic envelope categories, you know, to get me back started into my cash budgeting. And now I'm expanding again because I realized having those individual categories actually did help me in the long run. So just a personal preference. And so the first one was Barney. He is our little senior dog. So that is, you know, his food, his toys, his annual vet bills. And then we have Hubby. So he's going to get one. And you know what? I put these. I like to alternate. If I don't take these off, I like to alternate what side the tabs are. It just helps in the binder. So there's Hubby. Treat yourself. This is my personal spending. It usually is empty compared to my husband's envelope. <laughs> I definitely am more of the spender. <laughs> All right, personal care. This is anything like our haircuts, manicures, pedicures, uh, couples massages that we save up for. Dates and gifts. That one's already in here. So we can take out that one. As stated, this is dates and gifts for us. So our birthdays, any like little trinkets we want to pick up for one another. All right, next category is anniversary. Ours is at the end of the year, so I have plenty of time to save up for this because as you can see, I don't have anything in here yet. Personal care we already did and Barney we already did. Okay, I did put those in the back, good. So we will flip back to those and put their money in them. I like having like one insert kind of per binder just to keep it cohesive and fun looking. Let's get Mr. Barney, or Barn Barn as we do call him. That's his little nickname. And get his money in there. Perfect. All right. So this is the You and Me binder. This is, you know, what I consider our little family. So that's why I included Barney in this one as well. And then next, I have just kind of like my general funds. Let's see what I've got in here. And I am going to keep the same inserts I have in here. I just printed them out with the, the new font. So we are going to keep our vintage T-Rex in here. So for car care, I'm calling it car maintenance. And then travel for us. This is anything, you know, related to whether it's a short trip or a big trip. We kind of put it in here. If it's a big trip, I will save up like a large amount in here. And then I will break it down into categories with a very specific budget when it gets closer to that trip. All right. And then one new one. Well, I shouldn't say new. One that I'm putting back in here that I just didn't have in here for a while is going to be for the nephews. I do not have kids at this point, but I do have quite a few nephews. And so I do like to try and put some money aside for them. So we'll put that in here. It could be considered like a long-term one and, and done digitally, but I think I'm just going to do it for cash. There are some things in cash that are just better done in cash so that I don't have the temptation in the bank account to like take them, take from them. 
which can be a, a thing for me personally in my budget. If there's, you know, money already in the bank account, it's so easy just to transfer it. So, <laughs> and take it from a category it really didn't need to come from. All right, so this is my holiday binder. It's got all kinds of stuff in here that I need to take out. Okay. And I love these inserts. It's like hard to tell all the detail on camera, but so many layers of fun in those ones. And so I'm gonna grab a whole stack of envelopes because we're practically starting from scratch on this one. So let's go ahead and, you know what? I got two over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need five more. Three, four, five, perfect. So I kind of split up, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> Cause I forgot with this events. So events, I ended up, this for me was like any birthday gifts, any holiday gifts, like Father's Day, Mother's Day. Um, and so I have like re-split out my categories. So this money is actually gonna have to get reallocated when I decide where it needs to go. So we're gonna set that to the side for now and get rid of this envelope. And then we are going to start with birthdays. So obviously this is any birthdays except my husband and I's because we just go ahead and keep that in our binder. So I definitely have quite a few of those coming up. And then instead of calling it events, I kind of just called it gifts for anything else besides birthdays. So that covers any other category. And then I don't like to take, you know, out of a gift fund or like the, their gift amount, the wrapping or card, you know, price. Like I do like to spend a certain amount on somebody and then if I don't have a card or gift wrapping that's a separate category for me it you know doesn't have to be for everybody but for me it is so I do have that one and this is gonna be holiday food always great to save up for because I know whenever we have like 4th of July weekend, which is actually multiple birthdays also on that weekend for me. Sometimes we're doing cookouts, so we have to bring food. And then of course you've got like Thanksgiving and Christmas where you're bringing food. And you know, it's just, instead of taking it out of my normal grocery budget, I like to have it saved up, ready to go. And then it doesn't put stress on the rest of my budget for that month. Cause those months can just be very, very hard on your budget. So then we have a holiday decor. I don't put a ton into this envelope, but I just like to have it there in case I find something that I want. And then we're gonna take out the Christmas, the old Christmas one, add in our new Christmas insert. Perfect. So this is, I do two Christmas envelopes. I have Christmas for everybody else and then Christmas for my husband and I and you know, a little something to get my dog a new toy or something. So I like to keep us separate because this is always my priority is everybody else first. And then I will stuff the one for us. So just the way I like to split it up and keep it all separate. And that way it gives us a budget too. All right, so that's the holiday one. That one's gonna be a, a thick one. I think I have more categories in there than I used to, but you know, the more you budget, the more you learn your budget. So it just kind of uh, flows and changes each month as you know, sometimes certain months you have certain things, but you don't have those every month, you know, for bills, it's just, you know, it, you learn as you go. And, and that's the best thing about budgeting is because it can be adapted and changed. And, you know, once you set your budget for the first time, that doesn't mean that it has to be your budget forever. You know, like, if, of course, you know, never, never, never think that once you've set it once, you're, you're done. Because everybody's budgets, you know, change. We all have either things come up or new bills arise and you just have to kind of sit down and replug those in and change things up. All right, so my last binder is my savings challenge binder. 
and we're just gonna have some generic, I'm not gonna put specific names of the savings challenges just cause I don't wanna switch up my inserts all the time, but I'll always probably have some type of scratch off challenge. Uh, a color by number is a new one I'm doing and then a luxury is a specific one, but I can change up what I'm saving for in this one. So I decided to put that there. And so we've got both of our waves. We've got the ride the wave and the vintage ride the wave. So get those in there and I'm excited to be doing more savings challenges. That's for sure. All right. So those are my, my budget categories. So I hope that like, you know, if, if you're well into your budget, that maybe some of those extra detailed categories could inspire you for something that you want to save for as well. But as promised, if you are a beginner, we are going to go over the top 10 that I believe you need in your budget. And to start off, most of the ones that I keep digital, you can either keep digital or you can keep in cash envelopes. But almost all of these are your basic starters and I, you know, and highest priority in my opinion. So you have your monthly bills. Obviously, you have to take care of your bills every month. And so if you don't know, you know, they're just coming out and you're not tracking them, write them down. Like, please, please, please write down all your bills so you can actually see how much you're spending. Because you may be surprised that you've got like five or six streaming services and you're paying well over a hundred hundred and fifty dollars every month in that and if your budget's already tight you may have to relook at it and see which ones are like your highest priority right now because you may not have even realized you were spending money on it so write out those monthly bills that's number one uh number two a food category whether you call it groceries whether you call it food if you want to keep eat out money separate so that you're really you know trying to focus on eating at home versus eating out you can split them or you can do like i do and just kind of have it all in one category number three is going to be gas or a transportation fund i know not everybody has a vehicle and so if you do have a vehicle, obviously you need a gas fund or you need a car maintenance fund. Like, you can, again, you can have them together or you can keep them separate. So you have like, you know, gas for a weekly amount. Car maintenance is more of a long-term savings for when those repairs come up. But if you don't have a vehicle, just call it a transportation fund because there's obviously ways you get around whether you have a bicycle or you take the bus. And so obviously you have maintenance on a bicycle, you have bus pass or bus fare. So a transportation fund. Number four is like some type of medical fund. So if you don't have your insurance automatically taken out of your paycheck, obviously you need to set aside for your monthly or semi-monthly however, however often you pay it for your health insurance if your health insurance is taken out of your paycheck i highly recommend having a medical fund just for the smaller things so a copay picking up medicine at the store prescriptions you know those little things that pop up that you just don't think about having that medical fund set aside you're prepared home maintenance this one is more for somebody who is owning a home, okay? So if you own a home, things happen. And I would definitely have a home maintenance fund. This can be for, you know, repairs, upkeep, services you have done, like on your AC or heat every year. Um, but this can also be kind of like a mini emergency fund towards your home so that like if an appliance goes out and you have to call a repairman or you have to replace the, the appliance completely, that is this fund. All right, next one. I think we're up to number six. <laughs> um, this is going to be either yearly bills or what I like to call long-term bills. So not everybody does their bills yearly. Sometimes they do them semi-annually, so every six months, or you have a bigger bill that comes every three or four months. So think of those bills because not every bill is monthly. You know, we do have some that are, if you have a car, you have insurance to pay on that car. If you have a home, you have insurance to pay on it. 
if you have a rental, you have rental insurance that you should be paying on it. <laughs> Always want to have some type of insurance on, you know, your bigger stuff like that. Um, or even just like a yearly subscription of a service you use or a streaming service or like for me, I do Canva because I like to use their platform for designing. So those are your yearly bills. That is the next one I would say is a, a, a basic starter for you. And then an absolute must have when you're starting budgeting is an emergency fund. Now, I know not everybody can just throw $1,000 into an emergency fund right off the get-go. It's going to be something you probably have to save up for, okay? But a basic starting point is $1,000. That's obviously not going to cover an emergency for everybody out there. But it is a good starting point because if you get in a car accident or you have a house claim on your home insurance you need something to cover the deductible so that you're not having to empty out all the rest of your envelopes and categories in order to pay that or if you have some other type of emergency come up you have some money set aside you know if there's a major repair on your car and you only have two hundred dollars in your car maintenance envelope or your transportation envelope but the repair is eight hundred dollars well then your emergency fund can cover the difference. You see, it takes a little bit of pressure off your budget. It makes, you know, life just seem a little bit more secure, <laughs> if you can put it that way. But once you have that 1,000, from there you can decide where you go. So if you're somebody who wants to have an emergency fund of 5,000, or like a specific amount, um, a specific amount of like three to six months worth of expenses, you can grow it from there. You know, it's your budget, you get to choose what you do, but no matter what, have some sort of emergency fund. And then coming up, savings. For me, this is just a general savings fund, but you know, besides emergency, we always should have just a little bit of savings. So if something comes up that like, I'd say is more of a want than an emergency, you can really contemplate whether or not it's worth spending the money on and it would be something to maybe come out of your savings and not your emergency fund because we want to save the emergency fund for emergencies okay so if you know just starting off maybe one one savings account just putting a little bit here and there aside and you get to choose what that money is used for it can either be a big purchase you're saving up for it can just be like your normal spending money for week to week but i would just call it a general savings fund once you get your budget going and rolling you can do things called savings challenges where you have like a very specific amount for a very specific thing you're saving for and you can start building towards that. And you can do multiple at a time, you can do one at a time, but just getting started in your budget, just have a general savings fund and it can be for whatever category you feel you need. All right, the next is I would say If you have a general holiday or specific event that happens every year that you always spend a lot of money on so I'm gonna say birthdays because if you are somebody who celebrates birthdays like those sneak up on you you know whether it's just a gift or you're throwing a party you don't want to be taking that out of your emergency fund because it's not an emergency. You know it's coming. You know it's going to happen. So I would say a birthday envelope and then maybe a Christmas or a different holiday that you have that you always spend money on. You know, so it doesn't sneak up on you and be like, oh, I don't have this saved up for or ready to go this year. Like, don't put that stress on yourself to where you're going in debt in order to celebrate a birthday or holiday event. You hear me? I have done that in the past before. I have done Christmas on a credit card. And trust me, the stress at the beginning of the following year is not worth it. So that is it, guys. That is the top 10 that I would start your budget with. Obviously, some of those you could, you know, if you don't have a lot of birthdays or holidays that you celebrate, don't put those in your budget yet. Just tailor it to you. But, you know, those major ones, your your bills, your transportation, your home or shelter costs and needs, your medical, just cover those basics. You know, those are priority. And then anything above and beyond that is extra and you can budget how you want. 
I hope this helps guys. If you have any budgeting questions, go ahead and leave a comment in the bottom for me and I will answer them the best I can. I would love to have you hit that subscribe button and be a part of the Dino Budgets fam. And I hope you have an amazing day and an amazing budget. So until next time, bye.